In today's video, we are going to look at setting up exception handling for my Spring Boot REST API. We are first going to have a look at the default exception handling behavior that Spring Boot is providing. And why do we need to handle exceptions? Then we are going to set up a global exception handler using controller advice and set up an error response model that gets returned whenever an exception occurs. So without any further delays, let's get started. Within my Spring Boot REST API project, I'm implementing these various methods. And there are going to be exceptional conditions. For example, if I'm passing an invalid ID that doesn't exist, or if I'm passing an invalid make name or a type name. So in these scenarios, it will be important for us to handle those exceptions and return a response which is useful for the client to understand. Let me first show you what actually happens if we don't do any exception handling. I'm going to take an example of my method get car make by ID. Let me go to the implementation for this method. In the implementation, I'm calling the car make repository and finding the car make which pertains to a particular ID. I'm using the Thunder client, which is in Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to make a call which pertains to the method get car make by ID. And in this instance, if I send this request, it actually returns with a valid response because I know that car make with the ID of 10 exists. Now, let me change that to 100. And I definitely know that the car make by the ID 100 does not exist. So if I make a call, it actually brings me this response. This is the error response that Spring Boot generates by default. And although this has some useful information, but the UI client is not going to make much sense of the trace stack trace that's returned in here. Up next, we are going to set up the global exception handler using the controller advice and create an error response model, which returns some structured useful error information that the client can use. So the first thing that I have done is under my models package, I have created a new model called error response DTO. Now this contains information which is somewhat similar to the spring boot error response that we were getting, but it also has some other fields that can be used to return some useful information back to the user interface. And within my exception package, I have created an API exception handler, which is a global class that can be used to handle exceptions throughout my REST API. So my API exception handler extends the response entity exception handler. And this class is annotated using controller advice. For any API calls where I can't find a particular record, I would like to raise a record not found exception. So I have created a new class under my exception package called record not found which extends the runtime exception. And I'm annotating that with a response status of HTTP status not found, which is 404. And over here, I'm simply logging that error in my log file using the message that has been passed. And then going back to my global exception handler class called API exception handler, I have created a method which handles the record not found exception. So this method is annotated with an exception handler annotation of the type record not found exception. And over here, I'm just constructing my error response model that I need to return. And then I return the new response entity with the error model and an HTTP status of not found. And back within my service method, where I'm returning a car make by a particular ID, I now want to handle that exception. So I'm going to first check and see if the make is empty or not. And if it's empty, then I'm going to throw a new record not found exception with a message string that makes sense to the client. So if the make is empty, it's going to throw that record not found exception. And that's going to handle up, get handled appropriately in the global exception handler class. Now let's try making that call again and see how it behaves. And now when I send a response with an invalid ID, it returns this structured error response model, which has all the fields that I had put in it. And the status code that is returned is 404 not found. So this kind of a response can make more sense to the client UI rather than sending the stack trace. So similar to the record not found exception, we can create different kind of exception classes. For example, missing header info exception or invalid parameter exception. 
And these exceptions can be handled appropriately in the global exception handler class, which is annotated using the controller advice. And in some of my other methods, I'm validating my parameters and then throwing the appropriate invalid parameter exceptions and which that then gets handled appropriately in my global exception handler class. So that's all what I had to cover in this video. And I have left a link down below in the description with the GitHub project that contains this source code. I hope you find this video useful and thanks a lot for watching.